I see where you're pointing at. See what we got here. I'm not trying to build any kind of like sustainable freaking fire. I just want something that lasts a couple minutes just to warm my hands up. Using what's available. Got plenty of uh, easy fire starting stuff in my bag. I just wanted to get outside. I didn't want to be in the freaking house feeling tired, sitting around doing nothing. I'd rather be out here, even if I can't do a whole heck of a lot just yet. I just want some, I just want to warm my hands. Got any gloves? I thought I had gloves in my jacket, but alas, I do not. Something small, something quick. Of course, I could always add to it if I needed to, if I wanted to. But I'm not out in the middle of nowhere for all intents and purposes. Just wanted a little fire to warm my hands, that's it. And then that, much better. So, yep, I went to the, uh, had my follow up today, the VA. I basically just check on you after you get all that stuff. You know, I start seeing the, primary care next week but I never people were asking me like what my a1c was and I didn't know because they never freaking told me but I was able to ask him you know once I got in there because they didn't really do I don't think they did it at the hospital they actually did it at the urgent care at the VA before it took me to the hospital and they said my a1c was 10.2 which yeah <laughs> Now my sugar levels, I've been maintaining around 140 to 160 with relative ease because I'm just not craving those things anymore. And I have a very boring diet. Although I have discovered, I call it the poor man's steak and eggs. Hamburger patties from the Kroger Deli. Fry them up, some seasoning on it. And then with that same grease, fry up two eggs, and that's a meal. That's actually pretty damn good, if you ask me. Not missing all that bread and all that stuff. It just It's almost like you have to stop doing it a while to even realize what it was doing in the first place. All the ups and downs and all that stuff, you know. And I agree with them. Is like, yeah, you probably were diabetic for a while. You just didn't freaking know it. But I still say, for me, the benefits outweigh the cons. As far as like how it's you know cleared my mind up and made my sleep better and all that stuff. And I'm just not eating as much crap poison. <sighs> yeah, that's a lot nicer. Walking out. Walking out here in the wind, yeah, it's shit, cold. So I'm gonna do another video here that was recent, recent months. But you know, it seems like at least half the people didn't see the last one that we put up. And uh, just in case you didn't, things that you know, just the different things we had more fun uh, fun with. I had that shelter for a while out here that I was doing videos in until some psychopath came out here and basically shredded it. 
tore it all down, cut it all up, smashed everything, broke everything. <sighs> Gotta love uh, psychos. They, they're a lot of fun. So, luckily for him, no one was around to catch him doing it. But that's that. I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'm gonna let this little tiny warming fire go out and uh, probably hike some more but why I'm doing this let's go ahead and jump into this video just in case you missed it this was a video that I did I was just bored one day and I'm like you know what I'm gonna build a shelter <laughs> and I think the only knife I had on me was a Benchmade pocket knife so that's what I used so if you saw it I'm sorry if you've seen it again if not well hopefully you'll find this interesting because it it does kind of fall into that whole base camp base camp in a bag series that we had before. Alright, so if you want to see more, don't go away. Hey everybody, Chris from Prepared Mind 101. What we have here today is the result of me being bored, wanting something to do. So I had planned on I went over to the ex's house. Because I know my son had a lot of stuff that I had lent him for Boy Scouts or whatnot. And I'm like, let's go see what you got in there, down there in the crawl space. Well, one of the things that I found down there was my big camo tarp from my base camp in a bag videos. It's an 11 by 9, if I remember correctly, camouflage uh, tarp from Harbor Freight Tools fairly inexpensive. I don't remember the exact price, but it's definitely under 20 bucks. I also had some, some burlap camo stuff, but what I did was I came out here with only those two things and the thing, the, the main components of like my base camp in a bag stuff, which are tarp clips and bank line plus one or two, uh, figure nine, uh, carabiners with just those things and a, a good tarp of some sort you can build literally any number of types of shelters in minimal time uh, that will keep you covered out in the woods and have minimal effect on the environment which means I don't have to chop down a bunch of stuff I don't have to pull a whole bunch of stuff up and I can tear it down rather quickly and keep all the material so that I just wanted some place big enough that I could come out here and chill and you know perhaps do some little knife demos or I'll, I'm probably gonna bring out one of my little folding chairs just to cut down on the hammocks but uh, just wanted another little spot but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the components and how I set this up and it just goes to show you something like there's no one way to do anything. It doesn't have to be a bushcraft, you know, formula. It doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be that. The greatest thing you got going for you is your mind and your creativity. Like if they give you enough parts, what can you do with those parts? What can you make? So I did not plan this at all. This took me maybe 30 minutes to set up. So if you want to see how I did it, then don't go away. Now this is not, uh, everything plus your kit stuff. This might be something you store in your car or something. When I go back and I'll refill my bag with the normal stuff, I'm gonna do some, take a little bit of my trail marking ribbon and hang on here so myself and nobody else that happens back here clotheslines themselves. So here are, here are the tarp clips that I'm talking about, these things. You can get these things relatively, you can get a bunch of them relatively cheap. And they are one of the most handy, useful, multi-purpose things you can have in your kit out in the woods. Um, 
you can use them for even like stringing up pot. I mean, it's just, they're limitless, especially when it comes to setting up tarps and creating new types of shelters. So the first thing I did was take a piece of 124 pound test uh, bank line and just made a double ended loop that I could loop around that tree to clip in my Night Eyes figure nine carabiner. And I made another loop down here on my full line, spool of line. <clears throat> and I just looped it through there and fed it through. And then pulled it over to that figure nine and tightened it up as tight as I could because you will get some stretch with a bank line. Next thing I did is I pulled out my tarp got it lined up the way that I wanted to and got the front end up over top of it leaving just enough that if it looks like it's gonna rain I can actually add some more line and stake it out a little bit more but then I take another tarp clip and clip it onto the line there and then I clipped it onto the line there the center part I clipped, I'm gonna move my camera here. I clipped those two because those also kind of make the spot for which my, my center pole, which is just dead wood that didn't cut it down or anything, but just chamfered it a little bit and snapped it. Now the other thing is like, I don't, I did all of this without any kind of bushcraft tools, no bushcraft knife, no hatchet, no nothing. The only thing I had as a tool was my Benchmade Claymore. So the Benchmade Claymore, the bank line, the tarp clips, the figure nine, and the tarps themselves is what did all this. Now going into here, so all I did here is I had this nice V branch here in this little sapling and I pulled part of it through and then I wrapped it down around it and anchored it with the tarp clips. So I'm not cutting into the tree with any kind of cord or anything like that. Everything is nice and secure and it's gonna be easy to take down. These back ones, I just made lines and then took some uh, took a stick that was still pretty solid snapped it and quickly carved uh, two tent pegs with the bench made to to stake out the back ends also used the bench made to pull some of the bigger brush down here I'll do some more work once I have more things but this is cool too so I had some of this camouflage stuff for like, you know, tree blinds or something like that. So I took three pieces of cord and tied them up to my ridge line and leave it. And then I, what I had to do is I had to cut one little slit in, uh, in the burlap so that I had one piece coming down on each side of it. So if I want to make this a little more hidey hole type or block the sun or whatnot. And then if I want to bring it up again I can just roll it up and tie it off with those three lines that I've got there makes it a little less noticeable let's see here but all in all this is a pretty cool little setup like I've I've used the base camp in a bag setup so many ways and it really depends on what you want to do with it what kind of shelter you want to set up is it an actual survival survival shelter is it a, just a chill and camp shelter? Is it one person, two person? 
because I mean I could fold that same tarp up and do like a like an A-frame where I've got one third of it folded out to be the floor and then another third is going to be the back and then another third is going to be your top you know lean down I mean there's just so many possibilities that you could do with it with minimal tools and frustration frustration it's it really isn't a competition I had a uh, I saw a comment where it's like you know show us simple stuff not everybody is Morse Kashansky you know trying to do this stuff well this is simple it doesn't get any simpler than this with enough bank line at least six tarp clips a tarp and a pocket knife you can set up all sorts of great stuff like it doesn't have to be a certain way yeah it's good to learn ways but I like problem solving and creativity over anything other than memorizing different types of shelters you know the basic core elements of what you need to do depending on your weather and your environment it doesn't really matter um, you can come up with ways if this was winter time I would not be setting it up like this <laughs> but it's you know beginning of August and I still got some stuff I want to do out here so I just wanted something where I could chill out here if it's gonna rain or whatnot it is not currently set up to be hammock conducive um, I, I'm looking at it, it might work. I have to make a little bit of adjustments, but I have to see. Um, but I, I didn't set it up with that in mind right now. It's more like have a chair, have a place to sit there and get a, get a lantern or whatnot and be able to talk. But it's not hard at all. And it's fun to go out and just see what kind of things that you can come up with. And I think that Harbor Freight Tools 11 by nine camo tarp is just the right size. You can get, obviously they make bigger ones, but like you gotta carry that stuff. That took up, that took up most of my pack. And it's not like ultralight type stuff. It's, it's very bulky. But all in all, I think it's pretty cool. One other thing I did, since I had two tarp clips left, I went up here near the um, the ridge pole and took one and clamped it down on the bottom side. So that gives me a point to, ha to hang uh, a small light like that uh, through night emergency light that I showed in the recent hammock ramblings video. So there, that'll take care of my light. Plus, once I get refilled on some uh, citronella tiki torch stuff, I'll be able to use that small tiki torch and put in there. That'll help keep the bugs away as well. Pretty good stuff. So there you go, folks. That is my base camp with a bench made. Uh, stuff's easy to do it's fun you'll like it go try it um, it's also a good thing to do with the kids when you've got them out there um, just to come up with new stuff and see what kind of new things you can do so other than that uh, that's all i got for right now chris prepared my 101 thanks for watching be sure to click like share and subscribe memberships are on the front page and i'll be back with another video here soon so see you then So if I actually had to build, you know, a more sustainable fire or shelter or something like that, the three main uh, wood processing tools that I brought out here with me, which are usually in my pack. So I've got the uh, Silky Zubat saw, which is my favorite non-folding Silky saw. I've got work tough gear 
JXB with nice fresh new Wilson wrap that was put on yesterday. Gotta love that. I mean, I pretty much chop split whatever I want with that. And then if I needed to feather stick or use a ferro rod or something like that, then I've got the uh, LT Wright Jessmic C, the compact Jessmic. AEBL stainless. Probably my favorite go to mini bushcraft knife. I mean, I don't even know how you call it mini. I can pretty much do anything with this. But it's set up in a sheath that I can just put that in my front pocket. Those are my uh, three main processing tools that are in my pack at the moment. I always have a giant ass thing for a. Uh, I always have a giant thing of fire. Playing around with this. Let's see if he's here. Three. Tyler, you slacking off? I know you're there. Yeah, I'm Alright, sorry about that. Go back to sleep. Now nah, you're good. I'm not What's up? I'm just out, out here shooting a video and sitting by a fire that just went out back in the woods. Sounded like you were 20 feet away from the radio. You'll have to repeat that one. So I'm just back here uh, shooting a video and made a little fire because it was freaking cold out here back in the woods. Hell yeah, you still out there? Yeah, say hi to uh, my audience. Hello, audience. Yeah, I'll be back here for a bit. Shutting the radio off though for a moment. Three. Give me a minute, I'll walk back through with a run. Alright. Yep, so. <laughs> Way to play with these radios. I got got my my neighbor that I go back here and uh, shoot the bows with, which some of you might remember if you were around during the summer. Just, uh, you know, the whole save, <laughs> save Ferris. If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but I'm like, these freaking radios are just freaking sitting here. So I just gave one of them to him because we like, our apartments are like really close. But even though I'm all the way back out in the woods, like the range on this thing, I can get all the way back to where I live. So <sighs> that was fun. All right, all nice and warmed up. Fire's burned out. What else I got out here? Anything? Oh, son of a bitch. I did have gloves. <laughs> Made a fire for nothing. But, uh, yep, yeah, uh, as far as like the A1C1 goes, you know, you guys that have it know how it goes. And you know, I'm not going to be tested for that for another three months or something. So, you know, it's the average. But he did say going in the right direction you know he looked at my log book that I keep I write down every time I uh, test my sugar and I'm lower than I used to be lower than I used to be so everything's good other than that uh, I just need to set a set a few hours aside and just start emailing companies flashlights knives gear whatever say hey we're back we're open for business Hopefully it stays that way. So just keep checking. Understand, like, and, and this is the way it is with, uh, you know, even channels that I watch. Just have your favorite channels and just check them every so often to see if they up, don't count on YouTube to alert you that somebody uploaded a video because they won't. Well, hello there. Nice of you to join us. Again, for those of you that know the joke. 
this is just this spot that I'm at now is just like this little place still in the city but uh, runs along this river and then once the uh, once the things are grown in like I got plenty of places to go back and do testing and crap like that if I want to get further away I have to travel about an hour in either direction to do something but once everything's grown in back here, I can get far enough, far enough back where pretty much I'm not bothered by anybody. At least to do knife tests and things like that. Plus it's a doable hike from where I live. I'd like to live further out in the country, but I just can't do that right now. But it is nice to just come back and find a spot and make a small little fire get out of the wind okay where to go go this way other than that uh, you guys got ideas for me things I've missed I don't know I'm reading all your comments you know when I put the, the heart on them it means I read the comment I can't respond to every comment but if I put the heart on, it means I did read it. So I'm always looking to see what people say, what kind of ideas they got and whatnot. There we go. I can't wait for spring. This is a pretty cool little spot, walking distance, where I'm at. Especially in the when it's nice out. I just come back out here in the hammock. Copy that. So, it's getting a little bit breezy though. I'll tell you one thing I, I do need. Some of you, I'm sure you know, you guys that hunt and stuff like that. This, uh, this jacket, which I'm not even sure what it's called. It's like some special design military coat that I got lucky and purchased one time. It's pretty much lost all its water resistance, so I need to get some sort of uh, water resistant wash to retreat this coat because it is one of my best coats. Although, <laughs> if it's not repelling water, it kind of loses its uh, value. Get my drift. All right, I'm gonna go over here and set up, wait for him to get back here walking his dog. I'm going to take my freaking gloves back out of my pack. Alrighty then. Here's, what, here's what's left of that shelter that I built. You know, it was good for a couple months. And then uh, somebody found it and they started like trying to like build walls around it. And then somebody else came by and just like literally, they didn't just knock it down. They cut the tarp with a knife. They cut the LED light that I had. They busted up that one freaking expensive ass water filter that I had out here. For the longest time, no one ever, no one ever came out here. I can hardly see anybody out here. But you go, you know, a mile in either direction, you might find little spots where people go and hang out and stuff like that. This was the quiet spot. But, you know, even when you are in the woods, in the city, out of the city, wherever, just don't always assume you're alone. Because you may not be. <clears throat> yeah, but, yeah, it's too bad that, that got knocked down. Because I, I was all prepared to, like, kind of shrink it down and close the wall it off and stuff for the colder months. And I could put a little fire. But, nope, they screwed that up. Well, no more fun. One thing we do, but we can. It still is a good spot to come out and shoot with uh, arrows and stuff like that. I still got one of the PVC bows hidden back there. We we'll usually just bring out the other stuff. Yeah, that sucked. This is why we can't have nice things. There's psychos in the world. 
this is you got a you got a Carhartt dog coat. That is awesome. Bring Carhartt dog coat. It's good because it's getting cold out now.